Hello, my name is Mark McLean. I'm 37 years old and I am from Scotland. I first discovered Medjugorje about 20 years ago, around about the time of I was transitioning between college and university and praying that I would get in. I'm going to outline a very, very brief journey of from then till now and then highlight back over that journey of what the fruits are of Medjugorje of how God has helped along the way with Mother Mary. So as a cradle Catholic, like many other days, I'm waiting for the bus to go take me home from college. And this one particular day, I just decided to go into church and kill time waiting for the bus. And what began as 10 minutes and then home, I began to go in the next day and the day after that. Then after a few weeks, relearning the rosary, the mysteries, praying more and more. And within six weeks, I, I couldn't wait to go back into the church after college classes. And I was praying now two to three hours every single day. I had a special experience then and a few other special spiritual experiences along the journey, which I'll save for another time, perhaps. But the main point to take is this became intimate with God. This became real. This became personal through the deepening of the meditations of the rosary, especially the sorrowful mysteries, and just giving my time to God in prayer. As God's providence would have it, after this short period now of this deepening prayer life and intimate relationship with God, I met a man who just had his experience, his conversion experience at Medjugorje. And as a little boy, and now again at 19, there was a rekindling of the joy of watching the apparitions of Fatima movie. Uh, as a cradle Catholic, we knew very well about Marian apparitions of Lourdes and Fatima. And now with the thought of one day if she could ever appear again on earth, I would go. This man tells me she is appearing. She's appearing in a place called Medjugorje. And he's just had his personal conversion. Now, along the way, through this one individual, he took me to a prayer group, which was set up with people who had just had their own conversions of Medjugorje. And they're meeting every week to pray and discuss scriptures and talk of the faith. I loved it. Then he took me to a retreat up in the Scottish Highlands to a place called Craig Lodge Community, itself being a fruit of Medjugorje. And of course, it's also the home of Mary's Meals, another massive fruit of Medjugorje. So after a year or so of learning of Medjugorje and going up to retreats at Craig Lodge, I decided to leave university. I went to Medjugorje itself first and had a wonderful time. And then after my return, I decided to join Craig Lodge community for the one year which itself gave such witness and such fruits and abundance to God's work in our personal hearts and our lives through that way of community life. And also seeing everyone's part played in building of the kingdom, everyone's part building Mary's meals, which is probably the biggest fruit of Medjugorje, if I dare say so. When I arrived, it was feeding 120,000 people, oh, sorry, 120,000 children, in a place of education all around the world. By the time I left, it was about a quarter of a million children every day. And now all these years later, with the same determination and zeal, with the faith in the heart of it, it's now feeding over two and a half million children every single day in a place of education around the world. The witness of constant work, of tiredness, but keep going, simple things like that really stood out for me. And then the witness of faith, quoting of Medjugorje itself, living it in the community and seeing both fruits growing all the time had a real, very big impact on my life. I was also discerning priesthood at this point as it first entered my mind during those first original weeks of prayer. I did a come and see with the Franciscans. I even spent a week with the Carthusians at another time. But at the bottom of the list was the diocesan priesthood. And I think because of all my wonderful plans and making it like a 
St. James's parish in Medjugorje with all these wonderful things happening of adoration and prayer groups and all these things in abundance I would do with that same zeal and I would be close to family and I could communicate with Craig Lodge, I can do this with the other groups that I'd met in the country and together we would set Scotland on fire and then maybe a little further afield. But I felt after four years in the diocese in Semri, making this very short, I persevered to a point that the perseverance was going against its purpose. I met Pope Benedict, shook his hand. I was there for Francis coming out in the balcony and I met some wonderful people from all around the world whom some I still keep in touch with. But shortly after leaving Semri in 2014, things took a turn for the worse. It's not the usual happy ever after testimony once you find God and Our Lady or Medjugorje. Now I seem to be in my mid-twenties and I have the rebellious time period for a few years. I was running empty. I was feeling emotionally, spiritually drained. For the next few years, I even stopped going to Mass. I stopped praying. Things were back and forth, but never lasting long enough to get back on track. And during that time, I set up a Marian Apparitions Facebook page called Marian Apparitions. And I also set up a YouTube channel called Prophecy Prepper. Now, as the name would suggest, I'm preparing for certain prophecies Our Lady and Saints have told us across the years, especially most recently from Fatima to Medjugorje. But it never went anywhere. I wasn't keeping busy. And after these few years of nothing happening, I was saying to my friends, what's my story? What's my purpose in life? And just a few weeks later, I decided to go onto a website called catholicmatch.com because several of my friends from Craig Lodge community back in the day and a few others in the faith circles all seemed to have found their other spouse and their living happily ever after raising beautiful Catholic um, children, beautiful families, all with God at the centre and living by the gospel, living the messages of Medjugorje even. And I decided, and then I was quite indifferent, but I checked it out. And within a couple of weeks after saying to my friends, what's my story now? What's my purpose? Look how it's worked out well for everyone else. What about me? I met a woman on Catholic Match within a couple of weeks. Her name was Frances. And being rather indifferent, I decided to travel down to England to meet her. She was a Catholic RE teacher. She is, I should say. She is a worship leader. She was part of a faith com lay community called Zion Community and seen very similarities to their, their place where they live with the Blessed Sacrament Church on site and the retreats and all the outreach that they do for love of God and church. It reminded me very much of my time back at Craig Lodge. So after things were going well for a few months with Francis, and I'm cutting it short, Last January, I took a leap of faith and decided to get everything in a van, leave my mum's house and head down uh, to England. And Zion Community was very grateful to set me up with a room accommodation to discern where things were going with Francis. So January last year, I joined the community um, to live there and work. And April, I proposed to Francis and in October, the feast of Pope St. John Paul II, we get married. And for the past four months, we're living very happily. <laughs> but that is the outline of the journey. If I could fill in a few extra details now along the way of the fruits. The thing that stood out for me is the witness of faith by so many others, from Craig Lodge to Mary's Meals to the prayer groups to every individual I've met who loves God. There is always fruits and loving the messages accompanied by our Blessed Mother in such a profound way is something extra, something more unique, and we're seeing the fruits in abundance. During the time between seminary and getting married, it was 2017, I was back in Medjugorje, and this was maybe my fifth visit, but it was the first visit in many years. I couldn't believe how long I had been. And I'm sitting in Apparition Hill. I have the Bible. And I'm running low at this point. And 
help me lord what is it mother what have i to do what why can't this change for the better again what happened to the fire the zeal the passion and i believe i opened up the scriptures and it was john chapter 15 if my memory serves me correct you know the vine and the branch is cut off from me you can do nothing you'll just wither away and die the wither and it's not just dying it's the death of inside the joy that comes from prayer or the lack of joy and depression that comes from no prayer, no God. And I felt very emotional because the conviction was so clear straight away. And it was so obvious at the same time. And um, that was the turning point for me to get back on track. So cutting it very short, I mean, I could speak about the spiritual experiences and the, the miraculous signs I've seen, not even in Medjugorje, but just in life in other places through living the messages of the time, through living the faith as passionately as possible. But now I would just forward to say that the journey has been up and down. The journey is like St. Paul writes in one of his letters, when you've been up and down in the length and the breadth, then you'll come to the knowledge of the Lord. And I believe that's one of the most profound things that I can relate to right now, is seeing that journey when we look back where are we? Are we in the same place? Have we came more forward? The journey is always going forward. Even when you f I feel it was going down, I was left alone, nothing was good. He's always been there. And although people told me along the way in those few years it was harder, it wasn't enough to hear, but the seeds were there and now I get it and now it's the fruit. So I look forward to take my wife to Medjugorje very soon, get back over there and get the fresh graces and and take them back with us here and keep it growing in our own home as we break, begin this beautiful vacation of marriage. I'm no longer worrying or discerning or try to figure things out. I've been very much, um, it's been very much made clear to me that this is the way for me. And if I can do my own fruits and planting seeds to others, then please, God, it may come through social media such as the Marian Apparitions Facebook page. We've already organically grown to 18,000 members and it continues to grow all the time. Uh, the YouTube channel is relaunching now. It's going to be all things Catholic, from Marian Apparitions and Prophecies to the Signs of the Times, right through to Catechesis, Scriptures, and anything that's going to keep increasing the faith and reaching others. That's where I see myself at for now. But go back to basics, back to prayer, fasting, scriptures, confession, holy mass, live the messages, live the gospel, and you will have a life worth living. I promise you that much. God is good. And I'm so grateful to have met everyone that I've had across this journey with Medjugorje being such a key foundation stone to it. Thank you and God bless.